Brilliance Audio presents Touch and Go, a novel by Lisa Gardner. Performed by Elizabeth Rogers. Here's something I learned when I was 11 years old. Pain has a flavor. The question is, what does it taste like to you? Tonight, my pain tasted like oranges. I sat across from my husband in a corner booth at the restaurant Scampo in Beacon Hill. Discreet waiters appeared to silently refill our glasses of champagne. Two for him, three for me. Homemade breads covered the white linen tablecloth, as well as fresh selections from the mozzarella bar. Next would be tidy bowls of hand-cut noodles, topped with sweet peas, crispy pancetta, and a light cream sauce. Justin's favorite dish. He'd discovered it on a business trip to Italy 20 years ago and had been requesting it at fine Italian restaurants ever since. I lifted my champagne glass, sipped, set it down. Across from me, Justin smiled, lines crinkling the corners of his eyes. His light brown hair, worn short, was graying at the temples, but it worked for him. He had that rugged outdoors look that never went out of fashion, Women checked him out when we entered bars. Men did, too, curious about the new arrival, an obvious alpha male who paired scuffed work boots with $200 Brooks Brothers shirts and made both look the better for it. Gonna eat? My husband asked. I'm saving myself for the pasta. He smiled again, and I thought of white sandy beaches, the salty tang of ocean air, I remembered the feel of the soft cotton sheets tangled around my bare legs as we spent the second morning of our honeymoon, still sequestered in our private bungalow. Justin hand-fed me fresh-peeled oranges, while I delicately licked the sticky juice from his calloused fingers. I took another sip of champagne, holding it inside my mouth this time, and concentrating on the feel of liquid bubbles. I wondered if she had been prettier than me, more exciting, better in bed. Or maybe in the way these things worked, none of that mattered, didn't factor into the equation. Men cheated because men cheated. If a husband could, he would. Meaning that, in its own way, the past six months of my marriage hadn't been anything personal. I took another sip still drinking champagne, still tasting oranges. Justin polished off the selection of appetizers, took a restrained sip of his own champagne, then absently rearranged his silverware. Justin had inherited his father's $25 million construction business at the age of 27. Some sons would have been content to let a successful business continue as is. Not Justin. By the time I met him, when he was 34, he'd already doubled revenue to the 50 million mark, with a goal of achieving 75 million in the next two years, and not by sitting in some office. Justin prided himself on being a master of most trades. Plumbing, electrical, drywall, concrete. He was boots on the ground, spending time with his men, mingling with the subcontractors. First one on the site, last one to leave. In the beginning, that's one of the things I'd loved most about him. A man's man. Comfortable in a wood-paneled boardroom, but also played a mean game of pickup hoops and thought nothing of taking his favorite 357 to light up the firing range. When we were first dating, he'd take me with him to his gun club. I'd stand, tucked into the solid embrace of his larger, stronger body, while he showed me how to position my hands on the grip of a relatively petite twenty-two how to sight down the barrel, home in on the bullseye. The first few times, I missed the target completely, the sound of the gunshot startling me, causing me to flinch even with ear protection. I'd fire into the ground, or, if I was very lucky, hit the lowest edge of the paper target. Time and time again, Justin would patiently correct me, his voice a low rumble against the back of my neck as he leaned over and helped me level out my aim. Sometimes we never made it home. We'd end up naked in the closet of the rifle range, 
or in the back seat of his SUV, still in the parking lot. He'd dig his fingers into my hips, urging me faster and harder, and I'd obey, out of my mind with gunpowder and lust and pure mind-blowing power. Salt. Gunpowder. Oranges. Justin excused himself to use the bathroom. When he left, I rearranged the pasta on my plate so it would appear as if I'd eaten. Then, I opened my purse, and, under the cover of the table, doled out four white pills. I popped them as a single handful, chased down with half a glass of water. Then I picked up my glass of champagne and steeled myself for the evening's main event.